So, my mystery microphone setups. All is going to be revealed in this video. As I said in my previous video, I was going to try five different setups and see which ones gave me the best improvement. So, I'm on my iPhone and I'm recording directly into my iPhone, which is what I wanted to do originally, and hopefully get a decent result. It doesn't have to be perfect. These Man Cave videos are going to be a bit rough and ready, but I want them to be very easy to make so I can make more of them. <laughs> I've just got my notes up there, so if I'm not looking at you, looking at you, I'm looking up there, or I might be looking up there or somewhere else because I've got notes all over the place. So, firstly, the microphone. The microphone, what I needed was a microphone which had a lightning connector so I could plug it directly into the iPhone. That was uh, a possible solution, but microphones that plug directly into the iPhone are a little bit thin on the ground. Uh, there is a Rode model and there used to be a Sure model as well, but I think that's been discontinued. But I was looking for something cheap and cheerful, and I thought, with today's technology, I should be able to get decent enough results. So I bought a microphone that had a lightning connector. I bought it from Amazon, funnily enough. And it was a Pixel Finch. Or was it a Finch Pixel? I was never too sure about that. And it was just under 40 great British pounds. And it was one of these miniature microphones that uh, you might see a, a newsreader use, that, that kind of thing. And it's nominally omnidirectional, but I did try it both ways round, and it definitely was directional to a certain extent. Now, this microphone turned out not to be adequate because it's it's got a fixed gain. It's like any US or like most USB microphones. They're used for a particular purpose, so if they've got a fixed gain, it generally doesn't matter. It's just someone speaking to them into them from a normal speaking distance. But what I found with this microphone was that I was getting distortion, and you would have heard it in the audio on my previous video. That's why I put a caption at the bottom um, saying to ignore it because it wasn't relevant for my purpose. And it was just on the very loudest peaks, but even so, I can't work with that. I just can't work with that. So it's gone back. Oh, well, Amazon are normally very good about that. I'm sure some people would find it perfectly okay, but it's just me belting out the syllables and consonants and stuff like that <laughs> that it didn't didn't like. So I'm just going to adjust my uh, costume. <laughs> okay, so the setups. We want to go back to the setups. So I'm just going to put it up on my screen so that uh, I'm sure I'm describing these <laughs> properly. So setup P. I think what I'll do is I'll describe the setup and then I'll show you the clip again. So setup P was the microphone clipped just here, so it was just out of shot. It didn't need to be out of shot, but I think that's a, a reasonable position to choose. When you get higher up, you're starting to get into the uh, the shadow of the chin, and obviously that's going to have an effect on the sound that you hear. So I think that's a reasonable choice for position. So the mic's clipped to my T-shirt, just out of shot, in the classic newsreader position. Let's hear it. <laughs> OK, this is position P. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. OK, that was position P. I've got that spinning beach umbrella of death going on just at the moment, which is a bit of a nuisance, but um, hey, we'll just have to live with it. And set up Q. I moved the microphone to here, so it's clipped to the neckline of my shirt. It's more or less out of the shadow of my chin, but it would be a problem if I'm turning my head like that. So there's often these kinds of compromises you need to make. If I had to keep my head still, but I was getting good results, I might accept that. So let's listen to this setup Q. So here I am in position Q. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high or vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. So what we can hear from position Q is we're getting just a little bit more clarity. But if I did turn my head, then I think that would be fairly obvious that it would you'd hear the difference. So I don't think I would like that. Set up, excuse me, set up Ah, oh. <laughs> this is going to look really funny. You're going to have a real laugh about this. 
It's the musical theatre position. So this is where the microphone, I'm just looking at myself in the video, it just goes in the hairline like that, so you can hide it in the hairline. Or if you've got this um, a microphone that's more or less the same colour as the uh, performer's skin tone, you can drop it down lower. And audiences don't mind that. The good thing about this is that it does get a really clear sound. It's often underappreciated, but the sound down here can be muddy through the shadow of the chin and through resonances from the chest. But the sound up here can be really, really clear. And clearly, turning your head doesn't matter in the slightest. I'm just looking at my notes because I've got this extra little bit. Funnily enough, in my days in the theatre, I never had to fit that microphone myself. But I did once have to fit a radio mic transmitter inside a, a performer's prosthetic breasts. <laughs> Can you believe that? OK, I'm exaggerating a little. They were large, hollow, plastic, prosthetic, pr prosthetic breasts. <laughs> And the thought entered my mind it might be a good place for the transmitter, but uh, I gave the performer just a normal belt pouch. What fun. Anyway, the musical theatre position, let's hear it. Righty-ho, this is position R. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. OK, that was crazy. That was crazy, but uh, at least we... Um, got to try out that position. If I'd settled on that as a solution, I would have found a neater way of doing it. <laughs> and uh, that gaffer tape. Um, uh, the, there's better tapes for that purpose. I actually used Gorilla Tape, so it was a little bit uncomfortable taking it off. But hey, one has to suffer from for one's art on occasion. So setup S. This was a little idea I had because I want these videos to be very easy for me to make, as I said. And one of the things that slows me down is that I like to be prepared and you know, I like to respect my viewers. And so I like to be groomed, put it that way, which involves grooming the hair. <laughs> so to get my hair looking anywhere near decent, my hair's crazy, by the way. So to get it looking anywhere near decent, I have to wash it before I shoot. And I could wash it first thing in the morning, but then I can't wear headphones because that makes my hair go crazy again. So basically, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. So what I have to do, <laughs> you didn't want to know this really, but I'm going to tell you anyway, is wash my hair about 40 minutes before I'm going to shoot and then let it dry naturally. And yes, I know what a hair dryer is, but once again, that doesn't work. It just makes my hair go crazy. But I thought, crazy is the word. But I thought, what about all these cool sound engineers, all these guys that wear their baseball caps and, and in their YouTube videos? <laughs> Not that I'm ever going to be cool. I mean, that ship has bolted and the horse has sailed. <laughs> but for practical reasons, it wouldn't matter if I was having a, a bad hair day or not. I could just put the hat on. And if I had the hat on all the time, like my reading glasses, it would make these videos look distinctive compared to my more formal videos. So that's where I started with that. And then when I thought, well, I've got the hat, why not tape the microphone to the hat? So here it is, position, where are we? Position S, here we go. This is position S. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. It's not a bad sound. It's not a bad sound. So whether I would do this, I don't really know. Actually, I'll need to come back to this in a future video, I think, uh, because it could, be, it could be a possibility. But I'm just going to leave it for now. So position T, the last position. What I think I'll do is I'll just play it first and... <laughs> You just have a form an idea in your mind where the microphone is. And then I'll play it with the picture again. So I'll just, just listen to it. And this, is and this is position T. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. OK, you've had a chance to hear it. So I'll just uh, reset reset that. And what it is, is I use a Sennheiser microphone. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to edit these videos, but I had a little bit of a thought going on there. So, uh, hey, hey, one edit isn't so bad, is it? So in my normal, more formal videos, I use a Sennheiser microphone, and it's positioned just here. 
<laughs> so there we go. We can uh, see it in the, uh, the the original video. Except I'm not using the Sennheiser microphone. I'm using the Pixel Finch taped to the Sennheiser microphone. So it's in my normal position, but it's a different microphone. So I'm just going to play it again, and you can see it this time. And this is position T. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. To my mind, that is the best position. It gets rid of the reverberation, it's crisp and it's clear, and it's fairly natural as well. So I definitely prefer this. It's not the best of microphones, but th this would be my preference out of the different positions. So, so if I just go to my other screen. I've got some of your comments, and I'm just going to read out a few just at r random. And we've got Paul Longtail Pear, 3812. This guy uh, does electronics. <laughs> How do I know that? <laughs> I prefer T, and it appears to me that you increase the distance to your cardioid microphone where S is the longest. Increasing the distance from a pressure gradient microphone will decrease the proximity effect. Okay, I'm not really sure whether this is a pressure gradient microphone. It's, it is nominally an Omni in the specs. I just think it's not a very well made Omni. I think that's uh, what's going on here. But it prefers uh, T. So, Greg Gobelman, 270, for my ears, R and S are the best, R having a slight edge perhaps. T was not too bad. I can't tell if you're moving the mic, changing the distance, talking into across or into the back of the mic. OK, talking, talking into the back of the mic. Yes, I did that just to test the directionality of it, but just for my own interest, I wouldn't do anything as stupid as that, would I? <laughs> Andreas Bo, 4509. Position S and T was definitely best, and I say that immediately after hearing them only once. Uh, Rab1T Jones 921, R and S were lovely, no reverberation at all. I would have difficulty telling them apart. It sounds like close miking. Lapel mic? Question mark. Okay, just a couple more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mind your P's and Q's, they are right out. I'm guessing he didn't like those. R, S, and T are all agreeable. Interestingly, S sounds were more pronounced in S leading me to choose T as just my cup of tea. OK, yeah, it's very, very funny, very funny. S sounds more pronounced in S, which was where I was wearing my hat. So maybe there was some interaction with the, the brim of the hat. I, I don't know. That could be a possibility. OK, let's do another one. This is, was, is A-D-S-K-N. I'd say S was best overall. The clarity of T was also good. But proximity to the mic was making your breathing too obvious. Well, I have to breathe. And we do have to make compromises in life. So if more people commented on that, I might really actually consider making more of a compromise on that. But I prefer it a little bit closer, even if I do have to breathe occasionally. <laughs> OK, I'm just going to do this one more. This is Scott Wolf 8633. Interesting, except for you, you see, I didn't do a U. Interesting, except for you, those letters correlate to the electrocardiogram of the distinct parts of said waveform, which can elucidate pathology. <laughs> oh, he's, he's commented on one of my other videos. Your Eric slash Paul video today was really funny with the state of America. The laughs really picked me up. Thanks. Yes, my video about uh, Paul McCartney and Eric Idle. You should go and watch that because I put a little joke in there. I snuck it in <laughs> and no one's got it yet. No one's got it yet. Even Betty didn't get it. So go and watch that uh, video. I'll put a link down there if you remember. So it remains to be seen what setup I'm actually using now because I do feel that I've got a setup which does work. It's not too fiddly and I think it will be practical for the future. So. Here's the question, which mic am I actually using now for this video? Here it is. <laughs> OK, so it's my, um, it's my Sennheiser microphone. It's MKH416, which is a very well-renowned microphone, particularly in the film industry. So <laughs> if it doesn't sound good with that mic, if I don't sound good with this mic, I'm not going to sound good with any mic. So it's a perfect mic for my, for my purpose. And... How am I connecting it to the iPhone? Well, it really did take a lot of research and 
I have a Google and I know how to use it. And I typed in all sorts of relevant phrases like lightning microphone, uh, Apple iPhone, XLR mic to Apple iPhone, XLR to lightning. I typed in all of these phrases and just nothing clear was coming up until I came across a YouTube video. And I'm sorry, I've lost which one it was, but there are several on a similar topic that said what I needed was the Apple camera connection adapter or the Apple camera adapter, or sometimes called the Apple Apple camera connection kit. Uh, it, people call it by different names. And it is basically, it's just a little adapter that you plug, you, you can take the audio interface. So my microphone plugs into my USB audio interface. The USB audio interface plugs into the camera adapter. The camera adapter plugs into the iPhone, I'm getting complicated now. And because the USB interface expects to be USB powered, at least mine does anyway, there's another cable that has a USB type Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, that plugs via a lightning cable into the camera <laughs> adapter. So it's a bit fiddly, but as you can hear, it does get the job done. And I'm getting the same sound, pretty much the same sound quality as I get from my no more formal video. So I'll be satisfied with that. I can tell you one thing that makes me really, really angry as a sound engineer. <laughs> I'm recording this using Apple's camera app, obviously using the video function. There's no audio level meter. So as I'm recording this video, I've got no way of knowing that the audio is working. All I can say is I've tested it beforehand on a short clip, played the clip back, audio is working. Is it working now? For all I know, I might have to re-record all of this video all the way through because there is no sound. If I've got to do that, I'll be doing it tomorrow. Okay, so OK, I've said everything that's in my notes, so it's over to you. So in the light of the fresh information, I'm sure you'll have some more comments on this and it'll be able to, you'll be able to uh, hone in your reasoning for which you prefer. And you can prefer any of them. Some people are going to prefer a set of tea like I do. Some people are going to prefer the setup I've got now with the Sennheiser microphone. Some people will probably go all the way back to R because they like it. So, you know, you like what you like. So just let me know what you like and I shall consider that. I shall set my subconscious to considering that. Okay, that's enough rambling. That's it for now. See you soon.